Well, hello everybody, how's it going? Uh, it looks like we have two concurrent viewers, so hello to all two of the viewers that are watching. How's it going? My name's Paul, I am, uh, I'm with the Dicey Review, and we are here tonight to play a game that I really like quite a bit. Um, this is a game called Nusfjord. It's from one of my favorite designers. I don't know if he's my favorite, favorite designer, because there's a few people that, you know, I really, really enjoy their games. But Juve Rosenberg is one of my favorites. Um, Juve likes to design some fairly complicated games. Not all of his games are super straightforward. Uh, doesn't mean that's a bad thing. I absolutely love his games. Agricola is one of my favorites. A Feast for Odin is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, it's in my top 10 as well as Agricola, but Nusfjord is kind of a simpler, uh, not that you would be able to tell by looking at it on the table, it's kind of a simpler big box Juve Rosenberg game that was released, um, gosh, a couple years ago, two, three years ago. Really, really cool uh, um, game that kind of streamlines and simplifies a lot of what Juve likes to do. And it also has just this wonderful theme that I'm really, I'm really a fan of. And I'll, I'll show you some of the cool things that are going on in the game as we play and talk through those um, and tell you the, the bits that I like about, about this theme. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Hello, Matthew. Oh, Matt, my Canadian buddy. How's it going, y'all? Um, so yeah, we're gonna play the solo mode. The solo mode um, is a little bit different than the multiplayer mode. Um, this game uses a version of a solo mode that uh, he kind of did a similar thing in A Feast for Odin, which I really like, which is I have to block myself each round. So one round I will place red workers, and then the next round I'll have to place blue workers, and my red workers that I placed in the previous round will block the workers that I've placed in the last round. So I kind of have to think things through. Um, but in general, this is a worker placement game where we're trying to develop our fishing company as efficiently as we can, get the most victory points, and kind of see how well we can do. Uh, we do that by placing workers out on a general board. So just like many of Yuve's games, he's got action spaces out here where you can come and do cool things. And these things let you uh, gain resources from the supply. There are three kind of main resources, wood, fish, and gold. Um, and you can use those resources to do a number of different things. You can build buildings out on your player board. You can uh, go and visit elders, which this is one of my favorite parts of the game. You can build ships, which will increase your fishing harvest, which is something that we can talk about here in a second. Um, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through seven rounds. And at the end of those seven rounds, the best score is what we're going for. We, we are gonna try and get um, the highest score that we can. And the rule book says that, let's see here, good players score 30 to 40 victory points. So I think uh, I'm aiming for 15, 15, 20 range. You know, if I can get to the 15, 20 range, then I'll feel, I'll feel like a true Texan Juve professional. So that's what we're going for. Um, and if you have any questions, definitely put them in chat. If you just want to hang out, say what's up. Put them in chat as well. Put your comments in chat. Um, this is just kind of a, uh, I wanted to play this game because I'm doing a review of it soon. Um, that'll be coming out on the channel probably in the next day or two. Um, and I was talking about the game and I was like, man, I want to play it. So <laughs> that's what we're doing tonight. Um, and then at the end of the stream, we'll talk about the things that we are going to be doing tomorrow and this weekend for Portal as well. But that being said, let's get into it. First round, um, we are going to be playing red, and uh, and then each subsequent, subsequent round we'll be switching colors. And what I'm trying to figure out is kind of which elders I wanna go for, which buildings I wanna go for, and how I kind of get there. Um, just in general, this pier house is pretty sweet. This one says that it will allow me to, right before I build a ship, I get three wood, which is fantastic. That's a super, super helpful building. Um, and this one costs two wood and a fish to build. On the left side of the buildings, you can see there are costs associated with building the buildings. So I might kind of want to go for getting some getting some wood and fish to start off with so that I can build a pier house. Because the more ships you have, the more fish you can get and and the process kind of repeats. The, the um, engine building process kind of, uh, you know, 
advances. So I definitely uh, think I want to go for the pier house. Um, some of these buildings are pretty cool. They give me an immediate benefit. The thing you have to watch out for in this game is that some of these buildings, if you look in the top right, there is a victory point associated with these buildings. It's so like this one, you can see it's a negative one. So this, this boat or this building will give me a free boat immediately, which is cool because it only costs two wood. So it costs a little bit less than building a boat normally, but it gives me a negative victory point at the end of the game. So you have to kind of watch out for that too. Because once you place buildings, they're there. You can't get rid of them. So you kind of have to think about think about what you want to do. So anyway, that being said, um, we are going to go through the three different phases. We go through the fishing phase where we get some fish and you get fish based on how big your fleet is. So in the first round, our fishing, uh, our fishing fleet is three, gives us three fish because we just have one tiny little boat. So we get three fish and the way that um, the the fish work in this game in the fishing phase is you get whatever your catch is. So in my instance, I have three, but as we get bigger and bigger ships, you get more and more fish. And then before you do anything else, you have to pay uh, your elders fish if you have elders, which we don't currently have any elders yet. Then you have to pay uh, your shares fish. So you have to kind of pay dividends to your shareholders. Currently in our game, we have two issued shares that we control and then three unissued shares. Now I may sell some of my shares to get some gold in the game. That's definitely a thing that might happen. But so far, we only have, um, we don't have any shares on the main board. We don't have any shares that other players have because we're playing by ourselves. So we're gonna pay ourselves these two fish and then anything left over after you go, um, after you pay all of your elders and your shares goes into um, the reserve. So this, this fish will go into my reserve. And since these two shares got paid out, um, I paid these two shares. These go into my personal supply. So anything you pay in your, you, any, anything you get from your shares goes into your personal supply. So right now we just get two fish at the start of the game. Now there is an action. These things will start to kind of pile up. So we'll have more and more fish in the reserve. You can transfer fish and wood that you have in your reserve over to your personal supply, but it costs an action to do that right up here where it says transfer reserve. So that's our starting situation. We have two fish, we have one fish in our reserve, and we have three workers that we can send to go do cool stuff. So let's see what we wanna do. So just a general thought process that I'm going through here. I definitely want more ships. Uh, because ships are awesome. They give you victory points, they give you more and more fish that you can catch each round, and they are just generally amazing because who doesn't want a boat, right? So I'm trying to start my own fleet of fishing ships. So I definitely want to, I think, go for the building that says, give me three wood before I build a ship, right here, this pier house. To do that, I am going to need to get some wood. I already have some fish that I can use, so that's pretty good. But I do need some wood to build that building. I don't know if there's a way that I could build a boat in round one, but that would be really sweet if I could do that. Um, because then in round two, I would get more fish for my, for my haul here. Um, we also need to pay attention to the, the B buildings over here and then the C buildings come in in round four, I believe. So we'll get some access to some C buildings which are kind of like in-game point buildings. So let's see what I wanna do. Let's see what I wanna do. Immediately one gold per elder. Um, yeah, and we can't, we can't forget about the elders either. There's an action where we can go here and take an elder and they get to go on our board. That is a really cool thing about this game. You get to kind of feed elders and then they come in and give you their expertise. <laughs> yeah, that is very true, Matt. Uh, if only I could get a boat in round one. I could get two more fish and I could use those to trade for a wood. And that wood would give me the ability to, yeah. This is like, this is this game is so Juve, it's great. Um, which some people would disagree with. But this isn't nearly as stressful as Agricola. I don't have to care about, I don't care about feeding my people. All I care about is not having empty spaces at the end of the game. 
and trying to build up as many points as I can. So I think I'm gonna make this my goal in round one. I wanna get this pier house. So to do that, I need to get some wood. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I think I am going to go and take the uh, deforest action. So the deforest action says that you get to go here and you get to remove one forest tile right here. So I would get rid of this and then I get five wood in my supply whenever I do this action here. So now I have five wood. And I have to be careful because I can only have 12 wood in my personal supply at one time. So uh, definitely have to keep that in mind. You can have as many fish and as much gold as you want, uh, but you're limited for wood in your personal supply. You're limited in fish in your reserve here. So I have the wood that I need and I have the fish that I need. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and let's see here. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have just gone for the forest manager. So the, the way that these elders work is if you go and take an elder action, you get to take an elder card. And when you take an elder card, if you have fish on this table, you can feed the elders and take their action. This one says I can remove two forests, gain five wood and one gold. And that would give me enough to buy a ship in round one. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. So instead of taking the deforest action, we're gonna take an elder, okay? And we are going to get the forest manager. So the way that this forest manager works, as I completely destroy the display here, the way that this forest manager works um, is when you, when you take an elder, you have to put them up here on your, on your space for elders. And if there, is, uh, if there is a fish in some of these elder fish plate spaces, you can take the elder action immediately when you take that card. So this is a new action that only I can take in the game, which is great because this gives me a very powerful action in the multiplayer game. If you take elders, you have access to these elders. Nobody else can use them and they are really good actions. So instead of um, taking the deforest action, I'm gonna go ahead and take this elders action, which says remove two forests to gain five wood and one gold. So my wood count doesn't change any, but my, my gold helps quite a bit because the cost for building some of these ships, um, some of them can be built using wood and gold right here. So this is actually going to give me the ability, I think, to do what I wanna do because, check this out. So I don't have enough wood currently, but I do have enough wood to build the pier house, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. The second action, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to build a building. Where's the build a building action? Right here. So I have my build a building action. That gives me the ability to build any one of these buildings that I wanted to. I could build this one over here, but I really like the pier house because it gives me a, a really awesome action. So I'm gonna place this building on one of my empty spaces on my board. To do that, I have to pay a fish and two wood from my personal supply. That is great, because now I have a building that gives me a really cool action every time I take the build a ship action. And then for my final action, I can go and build a ship because right before I build a ship, I get three wood. So that happens because of this building. And now I have six wood and one gold, which is exactly the cost of this cutter. So now I have enough to build this ship, which I will for sure do. So I'm gonna pay my one gold. I'm gonna pay my uh, six wood. So that was an expensive, that was an expensive ship, but that's gonna set me up well later in the game, I think, because more fish is, is very nice. More fish is the way to go. So when you build a ship, not only is it worth two points, but it goes down here to the right of your existing ships. And so now every round, it's gonna increase my uh, my output, my, my fishing haul. So that's fantastic. So that is round one. And that's it. That's round one. I am, I am done with that round. Um, so in round two, I have to use the blue workers and we are reminded of that in our little handy dandy round tracker in the solo game. Um, but the red workers stay out there, so they block me. I can't go where my red workers are, which is a bit of a bummer 
because the build a ship action is blocked, the take an elder action is blocked, but we're, it's not completely, it's not all bad because uh, we do have one little imitate copy an action thing down here that says we can uh, go and copy any blocked action. So I do have the ability to, to do something cool. Like if I wanted to go and, and um, you know, use an elder card or something like that. But I think what I want to do is I want to issue some, issue some shares and then buy them because I need to increase the amount of fish that I can keep each round. Um, yeah, that is very true, Matt. So like, I remember we played this, you, you might have played it with me at BGGCon. Um, Mayfair was there demoing it that year. And um, yeah, you're kind of limited on your fish supply because of the, the amount of shares that you have. Now, the excess fish that you don't pay out go into your reserve and you can transfer those over, but it does take an action to do that. Um, and there are some, let's see here, there are some actions that uh, are buildings that allow you to to gain bonuses for transferring your reserve i don't see any of those out here right now but that's also kind of a cool um, engine that you can get going is you can get this engine going where you're transferring stuff back and forth from your reserve and every time you do that you get a cool thing so um anyway that's that's also a possibility depending on which deck you use i'm using the herring deck and there's three different decks in the game that you can use and an expansion a place deck expansion where you can get even more choices so Anyway, we are in round two, um, and we need to go ahead and do the fishing phase. So we get six fish this round because we have doubled our fish output. So now I am, let's see here, I'm getting five, six. Before we do anything, I've got to feed my elder. And this isn't all bad because as the elders fill up, you uh, when an elder card gets three fish on it, you put one in your personal supply and then two back to the general supply. So filling up your elders is not necessarily a bad thing because you get some fish back. Then I have to pay my shares and then anything left over goes into my reserve. So these fish go into my personal supply. And I think this round is probably gonna be about getting some shares issued and then maybe buying those. Um, so what I could do what I could do is I could, uh, let's say turn one, I wanna go up here and issue a share. So when I issue a share, this uh, this share gets put into the, the supply and I get two gold. Pretty straightforward, not a bad thing. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad option because, let's see here, I wanna try and get some gold for some of these buildings out here because there's one gold that says before you buy a ship get one gold or there's one building out here rather that says before you buy a ship get one gold so i could combo this building with my pier house to like every time i go and get a ship i get three gold or three wood and one gold for free so that would make building a, a cutter very very doable so I think I may wanna try for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna issue one of my shares. I'm gonna issue another one of my shares using the copy in action, which will get me two more gold. And then for my final action, I think I wanna go and buy all shares in the marketplace, which it's one gold per share. So I'm gonna be spending two of the four gold I gained. But the cool thing is, is now I have four shares that are issued in my company. So I am like insider trading like you would not believe investing in my own company. Um, but the cool thing about that is, is that every round now, I'm gonna get four, uh, four fish directly into my personal supply. And at the end of the game, any unissued share that you still have in your supply is a negative point. So I'm getting rid of negative points, I'm increasing my fishing haul, and then shares that you have in your supply are actually a point. So I'm getting, I'm increasing my points, getting better fish um, uh, hauls and things like that. So it's not not totally bad. So that's, that means that we're moving into round three. Um, I'm gonna get the red workers back, which free up some action spaces, which is fantastic. And we are gonna go into our fishing uh, fishing phase again. So in the fishing phase, my, uh, my fleet is still six fish worth of boats here. So I get my six fish, I have to pay my elder, which this one, fills up, so one of these goes into my supply and then he, the other two go off. Um, I freaking love these Elder cards. Thematically, these are so cool um, because it's basically you have these like 
experts in your community, these elderly people who have like tips and tricks and you're feeding them at this community table and saying like, hey, I know you used to be a forest manager. Like, do you have any tips on how to forest more efficiently or how to, you know, log more efficiently? He's like, oh yeah, you just remove two of these and whatever, you save time, you make more money and all this kind of stuff. I love the thematic tie-in for this um, that you can just like feed people and get bonuses from that and like learn from their expertise, which is a super cool tie-in. But so I have fed my, uh, I fed my elder here and actually the remaining four fish are gonna go to these four shares. My one leftover will go in my, in my reserve and now my fish are actually kind of starting to pile up. So I need to do something. Um, there's a couple of things you can do with fish. You can use them to build buildings, which is obviously a, a good option because that's points at the end of the game. You can also um, you can also use fish to take this uh, serve fish action, which gives you gold and fish, which is fantastic. And I kind of based on the based on the things that I'm seeing, I'm kind of seeing a boat building fishing engine here because I have a building that I want to build called the uh, let's see here seafaring society, which gets me a gold before I build a ship. And then there's a boat carver card right here that says four victory points if you have six plus ships, including the cat boat, which I currently have two, and I could start to. Um, I could basically build these boats for free because before I take a build a boat action, um, I get three wood for free, so they would only cost two fish. So that's that's not bad. Um, I, I may start doing that, uh, which is great because I can build a boat a couple of different ways. I can use the constructor, I can get him on the team, and then I'll start to work out. And then I can start built cranking out these boats. So before the end of the game, I think I wanna increase my boats get this boat carver building and get the seafaring society building. And I think that'll really help help my strategy here. So what I'm gonna do first thing this round, I think, is I am going to um, get some wood. I need some wood. So I think, um, I think I'm gonna re for, no. I only need a couple of wood, so I think I'll just thin out. So this gives me one wood for every forest that I have. I currently have two, so I'm gonna get two wood, which is not the best, but at the same time, it's enough for what I need. Then uh, I am going to go and build a building right here. And I think I'm gonna build the Seafaring Society. So this one is fantastic because it's one wood and two gold. So I'm, I'm losing some gold here, but this one is going to give me the ability to do some really cool stuff on ships here. So Seafaring Society, this one uh, is two points. It costs me a wood and two gold, but it's it's two points, uh, two points at the end of the game. And then it also gives me a really cool ability uh, before I build a boat, which I think I'm about to do. I also need to start feeding, uh, doing the feed the community action, serve fish action eventually. Um, so the buildings, Matt, are a random setup depending on which deck you use. So I'll show you. There are a number of different A cards that you get, you shuffle out, you shuffle up all the A cards and then deal them out on this A board. So these are the buildings that didn't. Whoop, these are the buildings that didn't get used in this game from the from this deck. All of these A cards. In addition to that, you also have six B buildings. So looks like six out of the six B buildings didn't get used. And then you have different C cards, which the C cards are going to come in next round. So we'll actually see some of these. And these are more in-game bonuses. Uh, the C cards are. So. Um, I think it's my last action. I am going to go and build a ship. I'm getting close to where I really need to use some of my fish here. Uh, it's getting it's getting bad. But the cool thing is, is before you build a ship, gain three wood and gain one gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain three wood, ah, and then gain one gold. So building ships is really going to start paying off for me. And I think what I'm going to do is I am going to build. 
Um, I don't have quite enough wood to build a, another cutter, so I'm gonna build a sloop. So that's two fish, two wood. So I've actually gained a wood by doing that. Um, and then the fish right here. So now I've increased my haul, one fish, and I'm three of the six boats that I need to get four extra victory points at the end of the game for this building, which is gonna be awesome. Um, yeah, it is nice to have the variety. So there's three, so like I said, there's also these two decks in the game. Um, that I didn't that I didn't use that have a completely different set of cards. So like they have different A, B, and C cards. And honestly, I've played this game, I don't know, eight, probably eight or nine times. And I don't I've never used any other deck than the Herring deck. So this is this is the same deck that I use every time. It's kind of like any Juve game. He includes so many cards that it's like I'm gonna you know depending on which card deck I pick to play with, like I'm gonna have choices for years. Um, cause I'll, I'll play this game probably three or four times a year and a couple of the times I'll play it solo. Um, so it's going to take me a while to get through all the decks. This is definitely a worth, you know, worth it for the 40 bucks that I spent given how much I like UV games. Um, okay, sweet. So I've built my building or I've built my boat rather. So now we're in round four here. And this one says in round four, we have to place four C buildings in the display. So what I'm gonna do is, well, actually I'm gonna leave these on the board where they were. So we get to place four more C buildings into our display here. So I guess I will just kind of place them off to the side. Can, hold on, can you see those? Yeah, you can kind of, well, you can't really see much of it because <laughs> we're, we're at a kind of a higher angle, but at least they're visible. So place four. And what these buildings do, so we'll just read them. Um, one of them gives me seven victory points. It says immediately one gold for every elder. It costs seven gold though, but this can kind of this can kind of double up. So it replaces every gold at the end of the game as a point. So you're trading seven gold for seven points for the building, but you're also gaining a gold for every elder that you have when you build the card. So really, um, it's there's there's a, there's some benefit to that card. Um, also, this one's for 11 wood. You can build a boardwalk, four gold, immediately four gold and four fish, and no points. Uh, the market hall, four points, and immediately three gold. That's not bad at all. And then the wharf, once your hall size equals 10, build a ship, one free schooner, only once, and the schooner is a big boy, so that's not bad at all. Um, but I've actually got a pretty sweet gold engine going here. Um, because when I build ships, I get gold, and then I'm gonna start getting a lot of fish, which I can use to take the surf fish action. So I think I'm in good shape. I'm probably gonna wanna get an elder this round uh, to maybe build another ship. But before I do that, I've gotten my blue workers back. We need to go into the fishing phase. So our haul is now seven fish. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and then let's see here. We need to feed our elders. First thing, so we feed that elder. Then we feed our sh or feed our shares. We go ahead and put these fish on our shares here. These leftover two go into the reserve. And how close are we getting? We are almost maxed out on our reserve. So pretty soon we're gonna have to transfer our reserve over if we wanna keep those fish, uh, which is not bad. Let's see here. I like to see how many you get to see open versus say the occupation cards. Yeah, everything, so like from the beginning of the game, um, the difference in the solo play and the multiplayer game, from the beginning of the game, these buildings are public knowledge. In round four, I think it is, in the multiplayer game, you get C cards into your hand and you have personal buildings in your hand for a couple of rounds. And then after that, they go into the display. So the main difference in the solo game is the, the C cards just go directly into the display. So you still... Um, you know, you see them just because there's no other people playing, but in a multiplayer game, those are actually hidden knowledge, the cards that you have in your hand. All right, let's see here. Um, so I still want to get this boat carver eventually. I want to fill up my ships here. Um, I got a lot I want to do. I've got a lot that I want to do. Let's see here. So I've got three workers. What do I want, what do I want to do this round? I think I want to take the feed... I think I want to take the uh, serve fish action because then that would let me, I think I could build like a big schooner this round, which would take up four spaces. And then if I did that and did two more sloops, that would give me enough to have six boats for my boat carver. Yeah, let's do that. 
Let's do that. Let's focus on boats and maybe elders at the end of the game. See if we can get some. See if we can get some. Uh, see if we can get some buildings that help us out with that. We have some buildings here that give us uh, gold for every elder that we have. We have some some stuff that gives us uh, three gold and some points. Yeah, I think I think this is good. So we have a lot of fish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the serve fish action. Serve fish action is awesome because it allows you to take elder actions, which are super powerful. Um, and all you have to do is, in fact, before I do that, I may wanna take my transfer reserve action so I have even more fish. So I'm transferring all my reserve over here. So I've got like fish for days and I'm gonna really blow out the serve fish action. So second action, I'm gonna go here and take the serve fish action. So this action, uh, you can serve plates based on how much each plate costs. So this one is one, this one's two, three, three, four, four. So I could go one, two, three, three, four, and four. Holy crap, okay, that was that was awesome. Let's see here. Oh, or I could, man, I'll tell you what I could do. I could really, really, since I have so many fish, thinking about this differently, there's an elder that is so awesome for the serving action. So I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna serve one fish, which lets me, uh, every time you serve, you get a gold. So I'm gonna get a gold for doing this and I'm serving one fish. Second action, I am, or third action rather, sorry, I forgot I transferred my reserve. I'm gonna go here and take an elder and then um, I am going to get the sailor. So the sailor is amazing because the sailor gives me the ability. So when you take an elder, if there's a fish in the display, you can take the elder action immediately. The sailor gives you an action to, um, serve fish, but instead of just getting one gold, you get one gold and one wood per plate that you serve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and serve again. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, three. This is amazing, yeah, yeah, this is gonna give me a lot of wood as well. Four, and that's as much as I can do. So, now, I have fed one, two, three, four, five spaces, which means I'm gonna get five gold and five wood. Holy, holy crap, that's a really good action. Okay, so uh, you, just leave, you just leave one spit, uh, fish per space. So these, most of these go away. And then I'm gonna get my five gold and five wood. Sounds like a plan, I love it. And then these last few rounds, I'm gonna focus on one, two, three, four, five, six. I needed one more. These last few rounds, I'm gonna focus on building ships like crazy. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. I have tons of gold too. I could actually go ahead and build the retirement home, which would give me one gold for every elder. I've got options. I've got so many options here that I could do some cool stuff. But I am now in round five which means I get my red workers back and we go through another fishing phase. So, um, the fishing phase, I still get seven here. Now I'm starting to have more elders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got to feed my two elders. Of the five remaining fish, four of them go into the into my shares, one of them goes into my reserve, these four fish come over here. So I've got I've got tons of resources. What do I wanna do with all these resources? Uh, I think I wanna build ships. So what I could do, I could build two ships this round, I think. Uh, holy crap, yeah, I think I might wanna do that. Uh, but before I do that, I think I may want to take another elder because I could also, let's see here, man, exchange one ship, sloop for a cutter, or builder, remove one forest, get one wood, and afterward build a building. That's not bad at all. Um, man, so much stuff I wanna do. 
I also need to not forget that I want to build my boat carver eventually, which I have the resources to do that. But I think what I want to do first is I want to go build a ship. So before I build a ship, I'm going to get three wood and I'm going to get a gold. So I could do two, th I could do one of two things. I could for sure buy a, I could for sure buy a schooner. Uh, the schooner is cool because it actually has two different costs. So the schooner could actually be built using uh, eight wood and eight fish, which is a lot, or four gold, which is also a lot because you're just trading points, basically. You're trading four gold for uh, four points, which is kind of the same thing, but it increases your fishing haul. I think in this instance, I am going to trade the four gold for the schooner. So I'm going to go pay my four gold, build this bad boy, and next round we're getting ten fish, which is... A lot, a lot of fish. So let's see here. I also need to worry with filling in some of these empty spaces. Uh, let's see, let's see, what do I wanna do? I think I might wanna build another boat. I think I wanna build another boat. So what I'll do is I will go here to copy an action. And I think instead of, since I'm getting so many fish, Instead of copying the build a boat action, I'm gonna copy the gain an elder action and take the constructor. So I've got a third guy here and I can go ahead and take his action. It says build a ship or build a building. I'm gonna build a ship. So before I build a ship, once again, I get these bonuses for my two things. I get three wood and I get one gold. So this, this is definitely starting to pile up here. So I'm gonna get three wood. And I actually think I may be maxed out on wood. How much wood do I have? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I can only gain two of the wood, but I can gain the gold because I'm not capped out on gold. And I think I wanna build, I wanna max out my ships to get me one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I could do is I could build another cutter which leaves me space for one more sloop, which will completely max out my shipping, my fishing hull, and um, allow me to build the boat carver to get four additional points and cover up a negative point over here. So I need to focus on, I need to focus on filling in the rest of my empty spaces on my board here so I don't get negative points. And I also need to focus on making sure I can meet this boat, this boat uh, requirement here. Cause I think that's kind of what I'm going for is like a boat and elder strategy here. So based on kind of how it's turned out. But that being said, I still have another turn and I need to get rid of some, <laughs> some of this wood, I think. Uh, so is there a, is there, oh my gosh, holy crap. So, I could build a boardwalk for 11 wood that gives me immediately four gold and four fish, which isn't bad. I could also build, once my, no, I can't do that because that would be too big for my board here. Uh, I could go ahead and build, no, I don't have enough gold to build the retirement home. That's a great one as well. Uh, and I can't build the market hall because I don't have enough fish. So I'm gonna have to hold off on these, but I, I do have a lot of wood that I can use for some of these buildings over here. And next round, I may have enough fish to build the market hall, which would be a really good building. That's three gold and four points, which is fantastic. So I think what I wanna do, oh man, the village center is really good as well. That's one point, it says immediately build a ship, one free sloop, which would fill out our thing right here, and take an elder up to two times without using them. So I could take two more elders. Holy crap. Oh, the choices. That last boat was not free to build, Matt. That last boat was not free to build. You make a good point. Uh, sorry, I got talking on my strategy and cheated. All right, so I spent, uh, I need to spend three and three. Good call, Matt, keeping me honest in the chat. Okay, so I don't have as much wood as I thought, which is fine, because I still have gold and I still have enough wood to do some cool things. Uh, and I'm thinking I may want to do the village, the village center. This one would allow me to build a ship for, build a ship, not for free. Well, yeah, one free sloop. It would allow me to build one free sloop 
um, and take an elder up to two times. And since I'm building a ship, before you build a ship, I would still gain these bonuses. Um, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, don't don't worry about it, Matt. I'm whenever I play solo, I get I get to especially when I'm playing on stream, I get to talking and then I forget I forget to do things. So I appreciate you keeping me honest. Um, because I definitely want to do that. Okay, I think this is what I'm going to do. So this is going to be a cool combo because I am building a ship. That's the keyword there, which should trigger these two right here. So what I'm going to do is my last action, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to build a building. Okay, so the building that I'm going to build is the village center for now. Uh, I definitely want to build the boat carver before it's all said and done. And this is going to cost me three fish and two gold, but it's going to give me some sweet stuff here. I still have two more rounds. This is this is great. So I paid my three fish, I paid my two gold, and um, so this village center right here immediately allows me to build a ship and fill up my elder board, which is this is amazing. So I can build a free sloop, which is going to fill out my my hull and give me enough to to trigger this boat carver. Additionally, before I build a ship, I get three wood and one gold. So I'm gonna that's going to trigger because I did build a ship and I'm pretty sure that's the way that plays. I can double check it in my, in the appendix, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the way that that plays, that it triggers that, um, those building bonuses. So, and in fact, there's this handy dandy appendix right here, which um, Juve includes in a lot of his games where you can go and look at how each building triggers. So, and it's alphabetical. So let's see here, village center, Um, let's see, and supply board and add the sloop to the right of your ship's fishing track. This part of the village center had, uh, this part of the village center has no effect if there are no sloops or if there's not enough space. Um, otherwise taking the sloop is considered a build a ship action, which may trigger other buildings like the seafaring society. Yes. I love this. I love this game. It's great. Okay. So I've done that. Now I can't forget. I need to. I need to take my two. Um, I need to take my two elders. So I could either take the harbor master, which says exchange one ship, one sloop for a cutter. That's really not a good option for me. So I think I'm going to go. I could either go for the pond builder, which says distribute four fish plus one fish per building, as you would during the fishing phase. So you get free fish. That's not bad. But I think I like this builder. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take this builder that says remove one forest and you get one good and afterward build a building. I don't know that I'll actually use this guy, but that opens up the contractor who is underneath the builder, which says uh, the contractor says pay three fish and remove zero one or two forests, and then build a building. Um, so basically you could pay three fish to build a building, which is not bad, but I think I'm gonna take this guy. So um, I think I think that's a good call. I now have access to five really good actions. Uh, I've got a, a great fish fishing engine going here. I've got a lot of points for my, for my ships at the end of the game, and now I'm gonna focus on filling out my board. I don't think I'm gonna remove these two. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and try and fill in as much of this as I can. Uh, and I think I'm in good shape to do that. Although I will say now that I've stopped, uh, now that I can't build boats anymore, I can't trigger these bonuses. So I, I, uh, I'm gonna have to probably serve fish to, uh, to get gold now, which is fine. That's totally fine. Or I could issue my last share. But I'm going into round six which says place three more C buildings in the display. Uh, let's see here, so I place three more and I'll just put them out here so that you can see them better. Um, so I have three choices here. I have, holy crap, this one costs 25 gold or 25 fish and two wood. Uh, immediately plus five gold. This one says seven victory points if you have six plus issued shares. I cannot do that. <laughs> uh, you can buy other people's shares in the multiplayer game. Harbor installation is 10 wood and five gold. Whoa, two victory points per ship, including the cat boat. 
Okay, this one is definitely, definitely getting built for me. To do that, I need 10 wood and five gold. So I don't have enough gold yet, but I can get that by issuing a share. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more wood. This is happening this round. That's fantastic. Okay, those are two of the buildings that I'm getting. Holy crap. So first thing I wanna do uh, is do a fishing phase so I don't forget about that. So I get 12 fish large majority of those are gonna be going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 fish. A lot of these are gonna be going to my elders, but I'm actually filling up two elder cards, which means those are gonna go into my supply. So I get one, two, these go away. Let's see here. That one seems like it's worth a redraw only for the two plus. Um, yeah, that's that's probably that's probably a good point, Matt. Let's see here, because I can't actually do that. So let's see what else we sh we could get. Immediately three fish per sloop, three wood per cutter, one gold per scooter. Holy crap! So this herring deck is definitely uh, boat boat related because <laughs> there's like lots of cool there's lots of cool i haven't actually explored the other decks i wonder if they're like related to elders and buildings those different those different uh building decks that's that's awesome all right uh so i've paid these two elders i'm gonna pay these three elders and then that is not a bad boat either or not a bad building either either immediately three fish per sloop which would get me six fish Immediately three wood per cutter, which would get me six wood and a gold for two gold. That is not a bad building and it gets me two points. So yeah, basically I'm gonna need to see if I have enough actions in these last two rounds to build as many of these buildings as possible. So I get four of these into my personal supply. These three go to my reserve and I gotta do some, I gotta do some, some stuff. I gotta do some stuff. So I have um, the ability to issue a share, which I will do which gets me to two gold. So I've issued my share getting me two gold. I now have the five gold that I need and I need a wood. So let's see here. And actually I wonder, no, I need to, I need to clear out my supply some before I try and build these. Uh, two victory points per ship. So I could build this one uh, I need to get wood before I build that one though. And I also want to build this one that gets me, oh my gosh, there's so much I want to do. I think I, how do I, I need to think about the order of how I want to do this. I want the boat carver. That's going to take away two of my wood. I think I need to clear out most of my wood by doing this first. But if I build this building, I would get wood but then I would need a gold. Okay, yeah, this is this is tricky thinking about the timing of how I wanna do this because I wanna build these three buildings if I at all can. I wanna build these three buildings. Uh, and how do I do that? So let's see here. I'm not gonna be using fish other than this building. So I could also get the gold that I need by going and activating the sailor action as well. So I could come here and then I would need to save three fish. I would use one of these and then I could use seven fish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which would leave me three. Oh man, there's so many options. There's so many options here of how I wanna do this timing. I think what I wanna do is I definitely wanna build a building and which one do I wanna build first? I think I wanna build the boat carver. No. Actually, I think I want to do this serve fish action first. I think I want to use my sailor, which is going to use one of my fish. And then I use three fish and then four fish to feed two spaces, which is going to get me two wood and two gold. Holy crap. I don't know where that one was. I think that was on this guy. Two wood and two gold. 
So now I have the wood that I need. I have the gold that I need to build a couple of buildings. And then I think my last action, I'm gonna go ahead and build a building and I'm gonna pay the 10 wood because this one needs to happen. This is massive points. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 wood. Yeah, make sure I'm right there. Yeah, 10 wood and then five gold to build the harbor installation. Holy crap, that one's two victory points, including the cat boat, which is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 victory points at the end of the game, which is fantastic. That was a, a great trade. And now I am in the last round. So the red workers come back, I have one more fishing phase and I need to build at least two more buildings so negative points, uh, I'm only going to get one negative point for each space that's not filled, which if I can do this round correctly, I'll only have one negative point. It's fantastic because this share is issued. So I don't have, I don't have a negative point for that. And then if I can build these two buildings, which I think I can, I just need to get one wood somehow which actually, easy, I can do it right, yeah, oh, this is fantastic, I've got this, this is great. I actually may be able to build, I may be able, I may be able to completely fill up my board. This is fantastic, okay, so uh, fishing phase, don't forget the steps, I do my fishing phase first. Man, why do I get so excited by spreadsheets? Like, I'm, <laughs> I get excited by the most boring games, <laughs> like what, what normal people would see as boring, the, God, this is great, I love this. This is why I'll sit here and play Agricola and, and Feast for Odin for hours. Uh, okay, so I get six, seven, and 10, 11, 12. Okay, so first off, I gotta feed the elders. So I've got five elders to feed, which is, is a lot, but it's okay, I'm gonna have enough. This guy gets filled up, so one goes, oh no, no, personal supply, that doesn't go into the reserve. And then these two go here. And then four of these go directly into my personal supply because of the shares. And then these remaining three go into my reserve. Fishing phase is done. I now have three actions. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go build a building, which is going to allow me to build the shipping line, which is fantastic. Because this one is two points, but in addition to the two points, now it costs two gold, which let's do that. In addition to the two points, it gets me three fish, let's see here, three fish per sloop, three wood per cutter, and one gold per schooner. This is amazing. So I'm gonna build this, and then I'm gonna gain all of my all of my goods. I get six fish, because I have two sloops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six fish there. I get six wood, because I've got uh, two, let's see here two cutters, so six wood, and then I get one gold because I do have one schooner. And I still have two actions left. This is insane. Sorry, Riley is leaving, my dog is leaving the room. So what can I do? Um, I definitely wanna build a boat carver, so I wanna go and, and copy an action. I wanna build a building here. So I wanna, I wanna build the boat carver, which is gonna cost me two wood and three fish. So that's an easy choice because that's victory points at the end of the game. And I have one action left and a ton of resources. So what is the best, what is the best building left that I could get? Um, one free cutter, discount on ships. Oh man, I completely missed the shipping office. This could have been huge. My entire game, that could have been huge. I can't believe I didn't see that one. Holy cow, discount on ships. It's three points, first off. Then every time I build a ship, I get a discount of a gold, a wood, or a fish. Uh, oh man, that would have been great. It is still three points. It may be the best option still out there, but let me make sure. Let me let me condense here a little bit and look at these different buildings. What I could what I could build because at this point it's like min maxing a bit. So uh, the retirement home I cannot build. That one's way too much. I don't have enough wood for this. I don't have enough wood or fish for that. Can't build that. Yeah, I think that may be my best option. This is uh, whenever your reserve is empty, add one gold to your reserve. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, immediately five gold. There's no way I'm getting that. Oh, one gold per elder, max three gold. 
So this one's not bad either, but it's essentially working out to be the same. No, it's not because I'm not spending a gold to get this one. So the parish house may be my best choice actually, because it gives me three gold and then I don't spend a gold to build it. So I think that one may be my best choice. All right, I think that's the one I'm gonna build. So last action, I'm gonna to go to the constructor, build a ship or build a building. And I'm gonna build the parish house, two wood and three fish. And that, friends, is game. We're gonna score it up and see how we did. This worked out so well, um, I can't believe. Uh, I believe it is only gold, Matt, yes. So at the end of the game, let's see what we scored here. Because this was actually, uh, this this turned out to be a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Those, the, the elder actions were big. Uh, this elder in particular, the sailor, he was huge because he allowed me to get gold and wood. So yeah, the game's going to end after seven rounds. You total your scores, which is the victory points on all of your ships and all of your buildings, which we'll do here in a second. And then add one victory point. Oh, also victory points per issued share. And then one victory point for every gold. And then you subtract stuff, uh, let's see here, that you did not score. Or you subtract stuff that you didn't fill out or, or uh, shares that you didn't issue. So yeah, I mean, it felt like a really good game, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how this works out here. So I'm gonna do, have to do some math in my head because I'm using all of my phones for, uh, actually, I could probably go ahead and pull this one off because I'm using my iPhone as a green screen camera here. And we don't need the green screen anymore. So I'm gonna use this for my calculator here to tally up my score. Uh, let's see, so for buildings, I've got two points, 12 points, so 14, 16, 17, uh, 21, 21. 21 points for buildings. So I think I may hit that 30 or 40 range they were talking about. Uh, 21 points, and then I'm gonna get a point for every share and every gold, so I add five to that. And then I add my ships, which is three, seven, 10. 36 points, 36 points is my total score here. And I have no negatives, which uh, I will refer back to the rule book, game in and scoring, good players score 30 to 40 points. I am well within the average, uh, well within the range of, you know, a good player. I'm not amazing, I'm not great, but you know, I'm kind of like uh, I'm kind of like the vanilla pudding pack, you know. It's like it's not the best flavor, but it'll get the job done, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Way my fifteen prediction. That is true. That is true. The, these worked out well. Like uh, these cards really worked out well. Getting the seafaring society, getting the pier house early were great. I just completely missed. I completely missed this. Uh, I say I don't need my green screen. <laughs> um, I completely missed the shipping office. This would have been huge in filling up this board. Because this is the way that this is the way the UV games are in my experience is that like this this building would have triggered five times basically because it was five it was five times to build up my shipping fleet but it would have given me five discounts and I could have used those discounted goods to maybe build another building uh, or maybe I don't know it's man it's it's uh, it's really tough to to play these games uh, as efficiently as possible but anyway. Yeah, that was that was the uh, that was the solo game. Hopefully, that was enjoyable for uh, everybody to to watch. Um, I definitely definitely had a fun time. Um, and I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna be doing a review of this game. I already have it filmed. I just need to edit it um, soon on the channel. So I'll definitely I will definitely uh, sorry. Let me reconnect to this. I'll definitely put that up soon. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Okay, my top-down camera's not working anymore. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Just to keep you in the loop, um, tomorrow, so I'm streaming tonight just because I already had the game set up and, and um, have a couple of hours before bed, so I, I'm gonna try and stream this and before I go and edit. Um, tomorrow night, we are... Um, going to be streaming on the Portal Games US channel. So my brother David and I are streaming and we did a poll in the Facebook group. Um, and I believe 51st States was the winner. So we asked people which 
we asked people which game they would want to see. Um, and since it is the day of Moloch on the this weekend, it is currently five votes to four votes to three votes. 51st State is being played. Um, so if you want to come hang out with us tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to be playing 51st State on stream. My brother David and I are on the Portal Games US stream. And then this weekend, I'm going to be playing solo the uh, Convoy app from Portal Games, which is like Neuroshima Convoy. It's in the it's in the Neuroshima Hex universe, which is like kind of this post-apocalyptic um, universe, and it's a head-to-head -head card game. So I will be playing the computer. And uh, if you want another prediction, I will lose. <laughs> I'm going to lose against the AI because the designer of the game said he's lost five times when he's played this past week. So I don't have high hopes for that. <laughs> but if you want to come see me play that, definitely hang out th with us this weekend um, or tomorrow night. But uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. If y'all have any suggestions on what y'all want to see me play next, absolutely comment below once this video posts. Um, and if y'all uh, yeah, have suggestions of what you sh I should play in the future, I will definitely try and take, in take that into account and play those games on stream. So thanks so much. Look for the review of this game coming soon. And until next time, I will uh, see y'all at the table. Bye-bye.